This is a beautiful sounding slide lick that's gonna involve some fingers behind the slide. I think it sounds pretty cool. It's gonna sound something like this. Okay, so this line revolves primarily around our E major pentatonic scale, our backing tracks in the key of E major. Our pentatonic scale, as far as we're concerned, is gonna revolve primarily around box number one, which you will know as this shape right here. Now the eagle-eyed among you will notice that we're in standard tuning and that's perfectly acceptable for slide. I do most of my slide work in standard tuning because frankly I know where all the notes are and it's a little more challenging for me to work out all of my favourite lines in altered tuning. So I do a lot of standard tuning slide work. And we're going to be sticking around this E major pentatonic shape because it's a really nice kind of sound. There will be a few other notes that we're going to throw in there but we'll begin by sliding up with our slide from anywhere on the B string all the way up to B fret number 12 with a little bit of gentle vibrato like this. Now an important thing to note with this is that when you're sliding up you must mute all of the strings behind your slide otherwise you risk getting all sorts of weird and wonderful noises that you don't necessarily want. I'm doing that by laying my second and third fingers flat across the strings. My first finger however is poised and ready to fret notes. Now an interesting thing about fretting behind the slide is if you have your slide in contact with the string and you fret a note without actually taking the slide away it actually takes the string out of contact with the slide and into contact with the fret, which is very interesting. So you don't actually need to lift the slide to get these fretted notes. The first thing we'll do with that in mind is we're then gonna slide up to our fret number 12 as we had before on the B string, and then we'll hammer on with our first finger onto fret number 10 on your B string and slide that first finger note down to fret number nine like this. Now once we've done that, we're then gonna take our slide, which is now up in the air, we can transition that across to our G string. We're gonna put it straight down around fret number 11, and then hammer on again with our first finger, this time on fret number nine, behind the slide. And this will give us a chance to play fret number 11 once again with our slide on the D string. Now, it's helpful to think about your first finger and your other three fingers essentially moving as two independent units here, because this keeps these two fingers in action to mute the strings behind the slide, and the first finger has more than enough dexterity to get all of those fretted notes that we want. We're not doing anything dreadfully histrionic, so it's enough to have one fretting finger behind the slide for this particular line. What we have so far is this. Now don't worry if you're fretting out your slide notes ever so slightly, this is not as big of a crime as people will make out, and lots of great slide players are actually doing this without realizing it. So if you're actually using the slide to fret the note against the fret on these uh, kind of lines across the strings, it's really not that big of a deal. Don't stress too much about it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our slide which is finished up on fret number 11 or around fret number 11 on our D string. We'll transition across to our G string and we'll slide slide up to the 13th fret and then down sweeping towards the 11th fret like this. Once we've done that we have another hammer on to fret number 9 with our first finger which is then going to be followed up with another slide note on D fret number 11 like this. So far we have this. And you'll notice this posture I've finished in where my slide is slightly lifted from the G string. This is going to enable these two notes to ring into each other. It's not essential, but I think it sounds pretty cool. Once we've done that, we're going to release our first finger to allow the slide to catch G11 once again. There'll be another hammer on back to finger number one on fret number nine. We'll go back to D fret number 11 and finish up with the slide on G fret number nine like this. Now that takes a little bit of dexterity, so practice that movement from D fret number 11 to G fret number nine, and make sure you can get there cleanly. This second half of the lick is gonna go something like this one more time slowly.
And the last step is to take this slide note and then slide it up in one sweeping motion to fret number 11 fret number 13 and then quickly back down and back up and we don't have to go all the way to 11 for this back down and up moment we can just go as far as 12 if we want to it'll give us this a bit of vibrato and then let it fall off now one thing that's not been spoken about so far is the fingering on the right hand you'll notice that throughout this lesson i've been keeping my plectrum held in the crook of my index finger. I am primarily a plectrum player, so I like to keep a plectrum handy for all this stuff. However, when I'm playing slide, I tend to prefer using my thumb and fingers so that I can mute the strings that I don't want ringing at any given time. So I'm gonna encourage you to do the same. All together, I'll lick slowly, it's gonna sound like this. And there you go guys, that is a cool slide lick that involves fretting behind the slide. I do this sort of thing all the time because, frankly, I've been playing guitar with fingers a lot longer than I've been playing it with the slide. But this also opens the door to all manner of cool lines. So any scalar ideas, anything that you would normally play with two fingers or even three fingers on a string, you can play with your slide if you're just creative about how you fret behind the note. So I'm gonna encourage you to play along with that. And you don't need a special setup you don't need a special tuning or even particularly heavy strings to really get away with this. We're just using a set of Elixir 10s on a guitar with a standard action and it works just fine. So there you go guys, this has been a little slide lick for you today. My name is Nick Jennison. and this lesson has been brought to you by Elixir Strings. It says so here, so it must be true. I will see you next time.